It is August 20th, 2019. From MMA Fighting Studios, this is an MMA news show. Welcome. I'm Esther Lin, and this week, we'll take a look back at UFC 241, Cormier versus Miocic 2 from Anaheim, and Ryzen 18 from Nagoya, Japan. In the main event of UFC 241, Daniel Cormier was set to defend his heavyweight title from the man he took it from, Stipe Miocic. Cormier dominates the first round with solid boxing and wrestling. Cormier has continued the waning success with his boxing throughout the second and third rounds. And in the fourth, the momentum swings dramatically with Miocic landing a bevy of body shots that lead to an opening for the firefighter's straight right. Miocic regains the UFC heavyweight title with a TKO finish at 4 minutes and 9 seconds in the fourth. Here is what Stipe Miocic had to say about his victory. He, listen, he's an amazing fighter. You know, he, he makes people feel uncomfortable in there. He did, you know, he did that for the first two rounds. But then uh, I started getting my bearings straight. I saw him slowing down. I'm like, okay, this is where I got to take it now. Like I said, I just started off slow in that first two rounds. It just wasn't, it wasn't me. And I just, in that third round, I knew I was a better fighter. And it's just, it gets a little calmer, man. It's, it's nothing but adversity. It's awesome. That's how we're doing here in Cleveland. Um, you had, I think, the second largest statistical comeback in a championship fight in terms of being like outlanded and then yeah. finishing the fight. What's going through your mind, you know, when maybe you're, you're getting hit a lot? He hit you with a lot of big shots. What was yeah. going through your mind at those points? That fight like a bitch. I, mean, I was fighting like a bitch. I mean, it really was. And, uh, you know, I, I take nothing from DC, man. Dude's tough. You know, he's, he's, he's about the best. Really. He'd be the best in the world. And, uh, you know, I just finally, you know, I just, it took me a little time to get like my, my, my mojo. And I just, I, I just couldn't feel it. I just couldn't feel it. And uh, my one coach told me that, man, when you walked in that fourth round, I knew it was going to be over. He's like, I just see your face, the way you're swagger, your hips are moving. He's like, I knew it was going to be good. Coming into the fight, it was unclear whether this would be Daniel Cormier's last fight. This is what the former champion had to say following his loss this past weekend. I felt like I was doing pretty good. Uh, <sighs> Yeah, I felt like I was doing pretty good, but then he uh, he landed he landed that shot in the, four, in the fourth round. He landed some good body punches, and he landed that right hand that I didn't see, and he got the finish. He did a great job. Problem is like the problem is I was I like was going and he was hitting me, but then they didn't feel like I didn't feel that much, you know. And it's not about like the shots that you take, you know. It's 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 the one that you just don't see coming, and that was a Great combination by Stipe off of that body shot. He threw that one two right behind it. And uh I didn't I didn't see it. You know, a lot of times I see punches and kind of roll with them so I don't take the full brunt of the punch. But on that one, uh he landed. He landed perfect. Just losing is just losing is just terrible for me. You know, I'm a competitive guy and um just losing any type of fight is just terrible. But you know. Being finished is just to me is just insane, you know. So I don't know. I mean, I don't, you know, my that's probably the biggest letdown is how I let my coaches down. They were begging me to wrestle, um, and that's probably the most disappointing thing is that I didn't do <clears throat> what I was trained to do, uh, and I feel like I let. My coaches now <clears throat> let him down. Was there any reason why he didn't go back to it just to end in the moment? Or you know, I think you fall, when you start finding success and landing things, you just kind of fall in love with it. You know, I I, I feel it feels like the Gustafson fight all over again when it, I wrestled a lot in the first round and then for the last four rounds I just didn't. And they were begging me to do it then, but tonight I actually paid the ultimate price for not listening. After the fight, many notable athletes chimed in on social media, including light heavyweight champion John Jones. Stipe is hands down the greatest heavyweight of all time. I have nothing else to say. UFC featherweight champion Max Holloway posted a photo of Cormier and himself on his Instagram with the following caption. I can't even remember how DC entered my life. He's like the kid who sits at your lunch table and talks to you just so he can eat some of your food. Now here we are, my big brother. Big brother to Habib, captain to AKA, coach at Gilroy High. Legacy isn't about the belts you take from the sport. It's about what you leave behind. 
DC is still and will always be the number one pound for pound baddest man on the planet. Bruce Buffer don't need you in there to do his job. But I need you to do mine. Rest up and get back to my lunch table, big brother. I love you. And on Monday afternoon, the former champion Cormier released this statement via Instagram. I am so sorry to all I have let down. To my wife and kids, I am so sorry you guys had to experience that. I never wanted you all to see that, and the hurt you guys showed breaks my heart every time I think about it. My coaches, I am sorry. I appreciate the work and time you've spent with me. My fans, thank you guys for all the love and support. You've guided me to all these amazing accomplishments. Stipe Miocic and his team, congratulations on a tremendous victory. You showed so much heart and grit. You are the definition of Cleveland tough. The full statement can be read at Cormier's Instagram account. In the co-main event, Nathan Diaz returns to the UFC cage after a nearly three-year layoff, kicking off fight week at the open workouts on Wednesday, where Diaz lit and smoked a CBD joint on stage. Opposite Diaz, former lightweight champion Anthony Pettis, coming off a welterweight knockout victory over Steven Wonderboy Thompson in March. In a thrilling match that goes the distance, Nathan Diaz wins the unanimous decision. His clinch work, knees, boxing, and his legendary cardio lead the younger Diaz brother to victory. After his win, Nate Diaz would put up his personal belt. Jorge Masvidal had a good last fight. All respect to the man, but there ain't no gangsters in this game anymore. There ain't nobody who do it right but me and him. I know my man's a gangster, but he ain't no West Coast gangster. Diaz would elaborate at the post-fight press conference. I just, no one was showing any um, acknowledgement for uh, being the best fighter in the world, which I am, just like mine's be all, that's what I'm saying. So now we're fighting for the baddest motherfucker in the game, uh, Bell, and that's that's mine. So uh, I'd like to defend it against Jorge Masvidal. So if you want to be the baddest motherfucker, that's how we're going to do it. No date has been set for the inaugural baddest motherfucker in the game title as of yet. When asked about a potential matchup with top-ranked welterweight contender Colby Covington, Nate Diaz had this to say. Tonight, would you consider fighting him at some point, too? Who is it? Covington? What, what weight? Uh, welterweight? I don't know who that is. So, like, if we got somebody good to fight, that's who I want to fight. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. You got to do something. If you've been here for two weeks and get a little hype show, I don't give a shit. Also on UFC 241, Yoel Romero and Paulo Costa battled each other in a fight of the year performance. All three judges awarded the first two rounds to Costa and the third to Romero. The decision was met with boos from the crowd in the Honda Center. MMADecisions.com maintains a log of media scores. 11 media members had scored the fight for Costa and 11 media members scored the fight for Romero. The victory for Bohochimia most likely sets him up to face the winner of Whitaker vs. Adesanya taking place in a little over a month at UFC 243 in Melbourne, Australia. In other notable results from UFC 241, Sadiq Youssef defeats Gabriel Benitez via knockout at 414 of round one. Derek Brunson defeats Ian Heinish via decision. The debuting Kama Worthy defeated Devonte Smith via TKO at 415 of the first round in one of the biggest betting upsets of the year so far in the UFC. Corey Sanhagen broke into the bantamweight elite by defeating perennial top-ranked Rafael Asuncao. And 22-year-old flyweight prospect Sabina Mazo earned her first victory with a 30-25, 30-25, and 30-24 scorecard against Shayna Dobson in what MMADecisions.com claims to be the second most lopsided three-round scorecard in UFC history, tied with Nurmagomedov versus Barboza. 
across the Pacific at Ryzen 18 in Nagoya, Japan, Bellator and Ryzen bantamweight champion Kyoji Horiguchi fought in a non-title bout against the 25-year-old Japanese prospect, 12-1 Kai Asakura. In what could be the biggest upset of the year, Kai Asakura knocks out Horiguchi in just over a minute in the opening round. On Twitter, Horiguchi apologized for not meeting expectations. While his coach, Mike Brown, took to social media to reiterate how proud he is of Horiguchi and how the young fighter still has, quote, many more mountains to climb. This is just the beginning. He will be back stronger than ever. Other results from Ryzen 18 include number one ranked Adam Waite, Ayaka Hamasaki, defeating Amp the Rocket via armbar at 329 of round one. Josh Barnett protege Victor Henry defeats Trent Gurdum by reverse triangle choke. And the UFC and WC veteran Takeya Mizugaki loses via knockout to Menel Cape. And now, let's go to Book It with Jose Youngs to see who this weekend's winners and losers should face next. Thanks, Esther. Now, when we speak of the main event between Steve Miocic and Daniel Cormier, I'm going to speak about both fighters together, as both of their next fight depend entirely on what Daniel Cormier wants to do next. If he decides to come back for one final fight, I would really like to see the rubber match between between the two to determine who really is the greatest heavyweight in UFC history. If that is the case, I wouldn't mind seeing it in early 2020, maybe in January or February in Cleveland. Last time Steve Miocic fought, fans saw him finish Alistair Overeem in one of the most insane receptions I've ever seen, where he was the fan. The fans were going absolutely ballistic for their hometown hero. I would like to see Stipe Miocic finish off his trilogy at home. So, if I'm the UFC, I am booking Stipe Miocic versus Daniel Cormier Part 3 in Cleveland in early 2020. Book it. Now, moving on to the Cormier event, Nate Diaz obviously ran through Anthony Pettis. If I'm the UFC, I am booking two things. Nate Diaz versus Jorge Masvidal or Nate Diaz versus Conor McGregor Part 3. Either fight can headline a pay-per-view without a title on the line. I know Nate Diaz is self-proclaimed baddest mf -er in the world. He wants to defend that title against Jorge Masvidal. That fight is unbelievable. The Conor McGregor trilogy fight is of course there, but that's not going anywhere. Jorge Masvidal is the hottest fighter not named Nate Diaz right now in 2019. So, if I'm the UFC, Nate Diaz versus Jorge Masvidal, book it. On the flip side, if I'm Anthony Pettis' camp, I'd really like to see him dropped on a lightweight. He's one of the best lightweight fighters in the world. Now, I know he was coming off that knock I went over Stephen Thompson before he fought Nate Diaz, but I really do think he was uh, losing that fight before he got the knockout. So, if I am the UFC, I'm asking Anthony Pettis to drop back down to 155 and fight the winner of Dan Hooker versus Al Iaquinta coming up. It's an excellent test for both fighters. It's a big name that uh, Anthony Pettis can, can, can sink his teeth into. So. Anthony Pettis versus the winner of Dan Hooker versus Ali Aquinta. Book it. Paulo Costa's future is obviously much more certain. He is most likely next for the winner of Robert Whittaker versus Israel Asanya, who are going to battle in the main event of UFC 243 in Melbourne for the undisputed middleweight championship of the world. Paulo Costa has already made it known he wants to fly to Melbourne, sit octagon side, enter the octagon, and challenge the winner. He has no interest in being a backup. He wants a full camp in preparation for his first title fight. Dana White himself has said he can't not name Paulo Costa the number one contender. So. Paulo Costa versus the winner of Robert Whittaker versus Israel Asanya is a no-brainer for me. Israel Asanya has the built-in rivalry. He calls him a juice monkey. He says he has T-Rex on. Paulo Costa says it's personal. Robert Whittaker is down to fight anybody. So, Paulo Costa versus the winner of Robert Whittaker versus Israel Asanya. Book it. On the flip side, Yoel Romero's future inside the octagon is a little more cloudy in terms of his next opponent. He already has two losses to the reigning champion. Uh, Robert Whitaker. He's not going to get a title shot anytime soon. You don't really want to feed him to one of these up and coming guys that he can dethrone. So, if I'm the UFC, I book him against the loser of Jack Hermanson versus Jared Cannon or the winner. It doesn't really matter. But I, again, I don't want to see Yoel Romero knock off a potential contender. So, if I'm the UFC, I'm looking to book Yoel Romero versus the loser of Jack Hermanson versus Jared Cannon simply because I don't want to see Yoel Romero knock off a potential contender. Book it. Thanks, Jose. The UFC announced that double champion Amanda Nunes will defend her bantamweight title in a rematch against Jermaine Durandamy at UFC 245 in December. Alistair Overeem is scheduled to face Walt Harris at UFC on ESPN in Washington, D.C. on December 7th. 
Also last week, former UFC title contender Kat Zingano was removed from the UFC roster. The last woman to defeat current UFC champion Amanda Nunes, Zingano indicated she intends to continue her fighting career. And now, the bad boy Alex K. Lee gives us his recommendations of fights to watch this weekend. Yes, there is no UFC this weekend, but that doesn't mean that there aren't plenty of fun fights for you guys to look forward to. First, I'd have to mention all times here, Eastern time. Tonight, Contender Series rolls on, 8 p.m. on UFC Fight Pass. Welterweight main event, Leon Shabazian versus Philip Rowe. Now, if the name Shabazian sounds familiar, it's because Leon is actually the older brother of recent Contender Series signee and current undefeated UFC middleweight, Edmund Shabazian. Leon was supposed to get his shot actually back in week one of this season, but he was deemed medically unfit to compete. He's getting his chance now. We'll see if he can live up to the hype. Also, watch out for 25-year-old strawweight prospect Mallory Martin. She's been doing damage in Invicta FC, Legacy Fighting Alliance. She's finished her last three opponents. Uh, now she meets Italy's Nicole de Segni. And you've got Ricky Steele, a karate specialist who actually had a pretty good shot of winning the Ultimate Fighter 27, uh, but he had to bow out of that competition due to an injury. So he's getting another shot at a UFC contract here. He's got to get past Phil Caracapa. It's a battle of unbeaten bantamweights. On Friday, from scenic Lake Tahoe, Nevada, we have got Combate America's action. That's right, Combate 42. Prelims start for free, 6.30 p.m. on the Combate Americas Facebook page. Then you gotta get into zone at 9.30 if you wanna see the main card, which is headlined by a pair of title bouts. Gustavo Lopez defending his newly won bantamweight title against Joey Ruquette, a guy he beat four years ago by submission. And then you have 18 and two Andres Quintana, fresh off of his Copa Combate tournament win last December. He will fight Bruno Canetti for a vacant featherweight title. And now we've got Saturday, free and clear, no UFC, Bellator 225 from Bridgeport, Connecticut. Now that's also on DAZN, so if you're you you know if you're watching Combache and you're in DAZN, just stay there. Uh, that prelims start at 5.45, main card starts at 9. Prelims will also be available, bellator.com and the Bellator app, and then the main card will also air on the Paramount Network if you enjoy watching the old TV for your fights. Uh, this is a heavyweight showcase. Matt Mitrione and Sergey Karatanov in the main event. Their first fight back in February, it lasts about 15 seconds, ended in a no contest when Mitrione accidentally clipped the little Sergeys. Uh, so I think we're expecting a little more action this time around. Also, you've got former Bellator heavyweight champion Vitaly Minikov coming off his first career loss. Uh, he's looking to bounce back. He's facing the legend killer, Javi Ayala. And you've got an intriguing battle of unbeaten heavyweight prospects, Tyrell Fortune and Rudy Shafroth. And then there are a ton of notable names on the prelims. Nick Newell making his Bellator debut, Mr. PVZ himself, Austin Vanderford, uh, former UFC heavyweight Timothy Johnson, uh, bantamweight prospect Mike Kimball, Ricky Bandejas, Conry Gracie, lots of guys to watch, lots of fights to watch. So as I said at the beginning, no UFC, no problem. Thanks, Alex. And finally, ahead of his unification bout against Habib Nurmagomedov, the UFC interim lightweight champion, Dustin Poirier, and his foundation, The Good Fight, is teaming up with Justin Renz, Fight for the Forgotten, to help raise funds for a new well and water tower for the Batwa Pygmy children after a flood recently ruined the Batwa's only water source at their school and orphanage. You can give your donation at thegoodfightgroup.com. That's it for us here at This is an MMA News Show. This is Esther Lin for MMA Fighting. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter at MMA Fighting, and Instagram at MMA Fighting D-O-T-C-O-M, and thanks for watching This Is An MMA News Show. <laughs> you like that? Yeah, <laughs> <My> show. <laughs>